evidence is inconsistent at all, Anderson, with the prosecutor's affidavit. The prosecutor made it clear in the affidavit that the theory of this case is that George Zimmerman pursued Trayvon Martin, confronted Trayvon Martin, and uh, some sort of confrontation ensued. So I still think that the that all of these other issues that are being talked about today, like the marijuana and, and, and Trayvon Martin's um, blood, those are non-issues. The real issue here is still who started this confrontation. And if you look at what the Sanford Police Department wrote, they believed that this could have all been avoided had George Zimmerman not gotten out of his car and set this ball Mark, in motion. Mark, is that a big deal to you, that, that the, the, the fact that the police report says the encounter uh, could have been avoided if Zimmerman had stayed in his car? No. In fact, uh, that's probably never going to come into evidence. That's an argument. That isn't evidence. The problem with everything that was just released today is it seems to undercut much of what was in that, affid that probable cause affidavit, which was thin to begin with. Uh, this document dump, and obviously I haven't been through it, you haven't been through it yet, but what's been reported so far certainly does not help the prosecution. What about pot found in, in Trayvon Martin's system? Do you think that will, will enter into, into the trial? No, I don't think that that's going to be of any great moment. Most judges, even though it's already in the ether, so to speak, now being reported everywhere, most judges wouldn't let that in because that's not something, it's not like it's methamphetamine or, or some other kind of a drug that, or PCP or something like that. THC and a, uh, they have so much trouble determining what, at what levels you're under the influence to begin with that I don't think that that's of any great moment. I think what is of significance here are the injuries or lack of injuries on both parties and where those injuries are. And those things are going to be telling. And this idea that somehow some cop wrote that uh, this all could have been avoided if somebody sat in the car, that is not evidence. That's a cop opining on something. And frankly, most judges would not let that into evidence. Larry, let, let's talk about forensics, because this is really the first time we're starting to look and, and see some actual forensic evidence, and particularly uh, sort of bullet project, uh, trajectory and the distance. According to the report, Trayvon Martin was shot from an inter intermediate range. The bullet passed through the right ventricle of his heart, the lower lobe of his right lung. That's a picture of the gun. What does that tell you? Well, it tells us the trajectory was horizontal and straight front to back. <clears throat> it's very consistent uh, with the positioning of the gun. Uh, and there was one entrance wound, no exit wound. The bullet ended up in the sack surrounding the heart. Does it surprise you there wasn't an exit wound? No, not necessarily. Uh, sometimes uh, shots will uh, pierce uh, through the tissues. Sometimes they hit bone and they fragment. Uh, the jacket of the bullet did fragment and ended up in the lung cavity. Uh, but no, there's no surprise. An here. intermediate range, what does that mean to well, you? Well, you know, there's several possibilities. There's a contact wound where the, the muzzle is right up against against the target. There's a close in distance from zero to six inches. Then there's the intermediate distance, which is about six inches to roughly a foot and a half. And that is what the pathologist is talking about. The, ballistic, the ballistics people that looked at the clothing are saying it's contact, but it's very inconsistent with what the autopsy report shows. The, the, also the level of THC in, in his well, system. Mark's saying it's, it's, it's a difficult thing, may not even get yeah, into court. I got to agree with Mark. First of all, the level is very low. It's, it, it, it's, it's at a level where if somebody were using uh, marijuana, let's say, four or five days earlier, they might find that level in So blood. it could have been days it before. It probably would have no effect 